fact, that's the only name that's worthy. Amen? Amen. So I was supposed to read something a few moments ago, and I forgot. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it now. And um, so this is from Brother Tim and Miss Becky. It says, I just want to say thanks to the church for the birthday wishes and all the gifts. It has been a blessing to serve in the church and to see God use me and Becky. I also want to say thanks for all the prayers for Becky's surgery and the food that has been provided for us in Christ, Brother Tim. And so thank you for um, just loving on him and her like that and the whole family. Appreciate that, and they do as well. So today, the title of the message is Refuge. Refuge. As I talked to the children a few moments ago, I, I said sometimes we, we need a place of refuge. Sometimes there are things that are going on in our life and we just need somewhere that we can go. We need something that we can do. Somehow, we've got to get through. And sometimes, the, as the, I heard someone say one time, the hits just keep on coming. And it seems like you just can't stop everything from happening and one after another after another. And sometimes we're just literally beaten down and we need a place. We have all faced many troubles and many fears. And these things wear us down and can drag us down. I'll say that again. We have all faced many troubles and many fears. And these types of things wear us down and drag us down. Today we're going to examine a passage, a psalm, Psalm 46. So you can go ahead and turn there, Psalm 46. Somebody said one time, well, why do you... Why do you preach on a psalm? It's, it's just a song, you know, it's nothing real special. But the thing is, why do you think that psalm was written? That psalm was written because, in this case, David was going through some very hard times. And as he went through those times, he found solace in God. And as he found that solace, he wrote this psalm. And this psalm can help us to grab that same expression to God that it did for David. It can help us in our hearts that are troubled. It can help us in so many ways. And so um, it's a wonderful thing when you read the psalm and when you study them and even when you hear them preached. It's, it's an awesome thing. So today we're going to look at Psalm 46. Psalm 46. We'll begin in verse 1. Verse 1 says this in Psalm 46. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So let's look at the first part of that. God is our refuge. Well, what is a refuge? What do we think about? What is a refuge? Well, a refuge in that time literally was something that was a place that someone who was in trouble could go. It was originally set up, one of the first times that we see the word refuge is in the Old Testament when someone had um, committed manslaughter. They could flee from where they were and go to a city of refuge where they would be safe. And when they went to that city, no one could mess with them. They would go there having repented of what happened and trying to get away from the penalty that was coming. They could go and be in this city of refuge where they would be safe. That word refuge is a safe place. It's a place where you can go when things are going on in your lives. We've all faced many troubles and many struggles in our lives. And it seems that um, in past several years we've faced more than our share. It, it feels that way. We look around at all the things that have happened and we feel like there's so much that is coming down on top of us. And every time we think we've gotten a step forward, we get knocked back again. We in just our own church here in the last few months have just been hammered with things happening that we didn't expect. Things that have caused heartache and pain and all of those things that are happening. So we try to find somewhere we can go because all of this is happening to us. Well, that refuge, God, is our refuge. He's the one that is the safe place. He's where we can go. We can go to Him. This is the amazing thing. Where exactly 
was the refuge cities located. Well, there were certain ones that were located in the Old Testament and people knew where they were, but they might have to travel a great distance to get from one place to a refuge city where they needed to, to be safe. In today's world, our refuge is simply a prayer away. We don't have to travel a long distance to get to that refuge. We don't have to go pull out a map or get out GPS and try to find the location. We can find that location simply by prayer. God is our refuge. He is always present. And all we have to do is go to Him. That is our refuge. That is the time. That is the, the one that can give us that place. And so once we seek that refuge in God, everything else, it's like this beautiful shield that goes around us. And when God can put that refuge around us, we go to Him in refuge and He can protect us in all of that. He is our refuge, but He's more than our refuge. He's more than just a safe place. He's also our strength. God is our strength. You see, most of the time when we need refuge, we're weak. We've been beat up, beat down, everything else that's gone on in life. It seems like every time we try something, we're having more struggles. You know, I've said this before. I never understood depression until I went through it. I never understood how some things weigh down so heavily on somebody that they feel like there's literally a weight upon them and they can't get up. And every time they try to get up, there's something else that knocks them back down again. Life happens that way and it always seems like that when you're down that's when you get hit even more well God is a refuge so you can go to that place where you can be safe but he's also a strength because he's the one that can lift you up when you're down like that he's the one that can take on your weakness that we were playing a song when the children came up I said what song is that Jesus loves me there's one line in that song that I just absolutely hold on to and I love it we are weak, but He is strong. He is strong. We're weak. God is our strength. In everything that happens in our life, God is our strength. We don't have to be strong. In fact, even though we think we are, we're not. We are weak, but He is strong. God is our refuge, a place that we can go to, and He puts that protection around us, but He's also our strength where He can pick us up when we're down, and He can give us the strength that we need. It says God is our very present help in times of trouble. <coughs> so He's not only our refuge and our strength, He's also our help. Well, what's the difference in our strength and our help? He's our strength. He can, he can pick us up, but He can also help us. <coughs> he can help us to go forth from that moment. You see, he's strong and he picks us up in our weakness, but he's also our help so that as he picks us up and we go back out, he's there with us. He's our help, a very present help. He's always with us. He's always with us. We say that all the time in church. Oh yes, I know, God is always with me. But how many of us, when we hit those times of struggle, in those times of weakness, how many of us feel so alone? We feel so alone when those things are happening. Well, most of the time, the reason we feel so alone is because we know in our head that God is always with us, but in our heart, we're not grasping on to Him. In our heart, we're trying to handle everything on our own, grab our bootstraps and pull ourselves up, right? That's what we're supposed to do. That's what the world says. But God is our very present help. That means he's always with us, always. There's never a time when God is not present with us. There are plenty of times when we don't notice, when we don't notice. You know, the, the I guess you call it a poem, Footprints, right? And so the person says, in all this time you were walking with me, but when times got so hard, you abandoned me. And there was only one set of footprints in the sand. God says, no, you don't understand. I didn't abandon you. I was carrying you through those hard times. That's why there's only one set of footprints. The reality is God is with us always in everything that happens. The, the unfortunate thing is so many of us don't stop to call on him 
during those times. We want to handle everything ourselves. We think we've got this. And as a last resort, as I said Wednesday night, can't do anything else but pray. That's the last thing. I've tried everything else. Now I can pray. No, do that first. God is our present help. He's with us always. He's there. If we could see Him, you know, sometimes I feel like if we could just see Him, then it would, it would help us to remember to rely on Him better. If, you know, He's just standing, hi God, He's right here, we can see Him, and, and, and that would just help us to go, oh, I need help, and we just turn to Him. <coughs> but the reality is, we should see Him in everything that happens. We should see Him in everything that happens. He is our help. He is with us. If we truly trust Him, we should see Him. No, we won't see a physical form standing beside us. But we can see Him in all the things that happen. He is our help. Look at verses 2 and 3. Verse 2 and 3 says this, Therefore we will not fear. Therefore, what does that mean? What came before that? God is our refuge, our strength, the very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change and the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, we will not fear. We will not fear. Therefore, God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is our help. He's there for us at all the time. So since we know that, we'll not fear. What won't we fear? Anything. Anything. Listen, we look around our world today, there's plenty of stuff to be afraid of. There are plenty of things to be afraid of. Listen, you can turn on the TV every day and they tell you how climate change is, is destroying our world, right? That could just strike fear in your heart. You look at things and you see earthquakes happening all the time. You see storms that are coming in. You see temperatures that are crazy high and crazy low. You see all these things going on in our physical world. Then you turn on the TV <coughs> and you see the crime that seems like it never stops. You see um, human trafficking happening in, in our own backyard. You see all of these things that are going on in life, and it's plenty of things to be afraid of. And these examples that were used here with the mountains slipping into the sea and all of these things happening, it's plenty of stuff that we could be afraid of if we didn't know that God is our refuge and our strength and our help. And because of that, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear. Everything you turn on the television is trying to strike fear in your heart. I absolutely believe that one of the greatest tragedies during the COVID epidemic was the sensationalism of fear that was put upon the people. Fear. The devil loves fear. Because if he can make you afraid, then he makes you useless. <clears throat> you ever walked into a, a very dark place and suddenly there was just this feeling that came over you the hairs on the back of your neck stand up all of a sudden it's just fear there's no rational reason why that suddenly should have made you afraid but you walked into that very dark place and suddenly you became overcome with fear why? because Satan is darkness and when he has that darkness, that fear begins to well up in you. That's what he's trying to produce in you. I don't know if you've ever been, a, been afraid to a point where you didn't feel like you could move. But that's exactly what Satan is trying to do to us in this world today. He wants us to be so afraid that we can't even move. How can we be effective for God if we can't even move ourselves? We can't trust him. We're overcome. We can't hardly breathe. 
all of the things that have happened in our life. Don't you understand all the stuff that's happened to me? Don't you know all of the things that I've dealt with in the last however long? Don't you get that? Yes, I do. But guess what? I also know that if I trust that God is my refuge, God is my strength, and God is my help, that I don't have to fear. You don't have to fear. You choose to allow fear to overcome you. No, I don't. I don't want to be afraid. Then stop. Trust God. We will not fear. Look at verses 4 through 6. It says, There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth melted. God is with us. All those things that were going on, all those things that happened, all of that stuff that seems completely out of our control, God is with us. He's right there with us the whole time. And when he speaks, Everything obeys. Everything obeys. One of the times in the New Testament when Jesus was with the disciples that made them even more afraid than anything that, that was happening. They were in the boat and the storms were there and the waves were filling up the boat and they were about to sink and they were terrified and they went to Jesus who was asleep down in the hall and they said, don't you care? We're about to die. He said, oh, you have little faith. He got up out of, the, out of the bottom of the boat. He came to the top of the boat and he said, be still. Whew. The waters were still. The wind stopped. Everything that they were so afraid of just completely disappeared. And I, I absolutely believe that there wasn't even any ripples left over from the waves that had been crashing down that it was just like glass when he said, be still. Be still. The disciples then looked at him and said, who is this that even the waves and the winds obey him? They were more afraid after he calmed the storms than they were before. <coughs> Pardon me. Because they saw this thing that was fearful, but yet God said, be still, and everything stopped. That same God is alive and well today, amen? And he can say, be still, and everything stops. We've got to trust him. He's with us. They were in the boat. All this was happening. Jesus was with them. But that didn't seem to be enough. But when he stepped out and said, be still, Suddenly they understood how powerful he really was. How powerful today he really is. All this stuff going on around us, how are we possibly going to deal with it? God is with us. Verse 7 says, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. What does that mean? He's our stronghold. What it means is God is fighting for us. God is fighting for us. He will not allow these things to overcome us. He is there for us. Remember, as they, they were getting ready to go out into battle, of a, a, the, the armies they were facing was much greater than they were. God said, just stand still and listen. And they heard a mighty noise in the trees and it sounded like a marching army going through the trees as God sent his army out before the people and destroyed the enemy they didn't do anything God sent his army out and destroyed the people the word says if we could see the battles that are going on around us today we would absolutely die of fear with all the battles that are happening in the heavens between the angels and the demons if we could see that today we would absolutely die of fear. But here's the great news. God's still winning. In fact, He's already won. And the battles are happening in our lives every day. There are angels that are fighting for us 
every day. God is fighting for us every day. So why do we fear? Why do we hold ourselves in such a low point and believe that we just can't possibly move on when our great God is fighting for us every day? He's with us. He's protecting us. And He's fighting for us. God did not create this earth and wind it up and throw the people in it and then move on and leave us on our own. God is with us. Everything that happens, God is still in control. What about the terrible disasters that happen in the world today, preacher? Yes, God is still with us. Yes, He knows about every one of those things. He knows they're going to happen. But He's still with us and He's fighting for us. Look at verse 8 and 9. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two, and he burns the chariots with fire. Listen, you see what's happening. He makes wars to cease. He breaks the bow. He cuts the spear. He burns the chariots. He does every bit of that. On Wednesday night, we're studying the Exodus. I'm excited about this week because we're finally going to get to the point of crossing the Red Sea. We left them last week. Their backs are against the mountains and the seas in front of them. And they're all fretting. What do we do? And they're going to be still. They don't have any other choice. What are we going to do? God can stop all that. We know that he destroys the war that's going to chase them. God destroys those things that are happening. He's the one that can cease all of the battles, not only in the world, but in your heart. He can cease those battles, those struggles that are going on in your heart and mind. You're dealing with stuff that's going on in your life, and God can win that battle. He can stop it for you. But we've got to trust him. He's with us. He fights the battles. He's here. Here's the great thing about that. Focus yourself upon the Lord. Focus yourself upon the Lord. What does that mean? Focus yourself upon the Lord. That means trust the one that's in control. Focus on that. But all the stuff that's going on around me. No, no, no. Look at me. Look at me. Remember when Moses went up on the mountain? He went up on the mountain and God said, I'm going to show myself to you. He went up on the mountain and there was the thunder and there was the wind and the wind was blowing so hard that rocks were breaking and peeling off the side of the mountain. All of those things that were going on. God said, no, you just keep looking at me. All of the stuff that was happening and eventually it all got calm. In the stillness that happened, God appeared. In the stillness. Because Moses focused on God and not on the things that were happening around him. Has there ever been a time in your life when there's things going on all around you, but you're so focused on one thing that you don't even notice? Happens to me every day. Some people call it ADD. (laughs) I'm so focused. My wife finally says, hey, I'm talking to you. If I can focus like that, then all these other things that are going on in the world, the noise that's happening, that Satan's got stirred up, and all of the negative that's going on, then why can I not just block that out and focus on God? The answer is you can, but you have to work at it. You have to work at it. You have to trust Him. Focus yourself upon the Lord. Focus yourself upon the Lord. You can do that. If someone else could do it for you, they would, but they can't. Only you can do that. Are you willing to focus yourself upon the Lord? Look at verses 10 and 11. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our God. Stronghold. 
Everything's going on around us. I don't know what to do. I'm running around screaming crazy because I don't know what's happening. Else I'm curled up in a ball crying because I don't know what to do. All of the things that are happening and my reactions are such that I don't even know what to do. And then I look to someone else to help me and guess what? They're running around the same way. <laughs> they got the same problems. You go to see the therapist, they're in the ball on the floor crying, you know. I mean, this is the crazy stuff that's going on in our world. The, all the reactions that we're having. Everything that's going on and we don't know. How do we deal with this? Preacher, understand the things that have happened in my life. If you just sat down with me, I could tell you some things. Yes, I, I, I know. For most everybody in this church, the things that you have gone through, I know. You've shared with me. I've prayed for you. I've been part of that. It's been a lot. And it doesn't stop. How do I, how do I deal with that? How do you deal with all these things that are going on? How is it that you can get through with everything that's happening? It's just too much. Well, our very first reaction, our very first reaction is to be still. Be still. What do you mean, be still? Be still. And listen. And all that was happening when Moses on the mountain, finally it wasn't until the stillness that he saw God. Some would say, well certainly God's strength was in all that wind that was going by and ripping off pieces of the mountain. But God said, I'm not in the wind. Well surely it was God and when you saw all of these Amazing things that have happened that nobody has any explanation for. God said, I'm not in that. But the stillness, that's when God spoke. That's when Moses heard him. It's hard to be still. It's really hard to be still. We've always learned our whole life that when something happens, do something about it. When something occurs, you got to do something. You understand that one of the biggest reasons why people have a hard time accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior is because that means that they have to give everything to Him and expect that He's going to take care of all of it. And all they have to do is pray. Surely I have to do something. Surely I have to complete a, a, a 10-week training course and, and then I have to climb Mount Everest and, uh, and then finally I can be saved. No! Th there's nothing that you have to do except to surrender. But nobody wants to surrender. Everybody wants to keep doing something. And all that happens in our life, many times we feel like if I can just keep moving, <laughs> I can just keep moving, it'll be okay. Maybe I won't get hit with something else if I keep moving. At Christmas time, one of our movies that we like to watch is a, it's, a, it's a funny movie. It's a, about the elves, right? And um, they're racing through the house, and, and one of the children have woken up and they're trying to capture him. And as they're running through the house, they start hollering, serpentine, serpentine, and they're running like this because when you run like that, you're harder to get hit, right? That's how we feel our lives are. If I can just keep moving, I can get away from this. I can just get away from everything. If I can just keep moving, God says, be still. I got it. I'm your refuge. I'm your strength. I'm your help. I've got it. I'm always present. I'm fighting your battles. I'm the one that's lifting you up. Be still. Just stop. And let me put my arms around you. Just stop. And let me heal you. Just stop. And let me fight the battles for you. Let me do what I promised you I was going to do when you surrendered to me in the first place. God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will always be with you. 
We think we can keep moving. We can keep fighting. We can keep doing everything. And eventually, it will be okay. But until we stop and get still and let God handle it, we're going to continue to find that we're going to fail. We cannot, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot overcome the battles alone. The battles are too great. We can't overcome them by ourselves. Well, I mean, I've been through a lot. I think I'm strong enough. I can probably know you're not. No, you're not. It might take you a while. It might take more and more and more being piled on your shoulders before you finally end up on your knees knowing that you can't handle it anymore. But you can't. For some, it may only take one thing for them to realize, I can't do it alone. They're the ones that are most blessed because they didn't fight for so long before coming to that realization that I can't do it alone. God is with us. He is our very present help, meaning he's here. He's not a God sitting up on a throne way off in the distance waiting on you to mess up so he can throw lightning bolts at you. God loves you. He created you. He knows the things you're going to go through because he gave you that choice in life. He stood with his arms open. He died on a cross. He paid the price for our sins. He made the way of salvation. And he said, all you have to do is believe. Confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Saved from what? Everything. He's always with us. If we can be still and remember that, he died for us. He gave everything. He's strong. He's the one that when we're weak, he's strong. He can overcome it all. Even the waves and the wind obey him. There's nothing that he doesn't have control over. Be still and know that he is God. Know that he is God. That word know doesn't mean just have a head knowledge. That word know is a relationship knowledge. That means to have full knowledge, know with all of your being that he is God. Know that 100%. Know him in a manner that he is part of you. That's what that's talking about. Know that he is God. He has become part of you. He dwells within you. Know that he is God. And God is always in control. And if we can do that, we can get to that point and, and daily call on him, then all of these things that we fight, all of these battles that we go through, all of the hard times, the heartache, the depression, the pain, the fear, everything that we go through, God can take care of that. Now, am I telling you that if you trust him and you're having those struggles, you're going to wake up tomorrow and you won't have any more problems in your life? No, I'm not telling you that. Please don't think that I am. He said, we will have trouble in this world. But what I'm telling you is, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'm going to go through it with you. I'm going to get you through this day, just like I got you through yesterday and the day before that and tomorrow and next year. I'm going to get you through the whole thing if you just trust me. I'm your tower. I'm your strength. I'm your refuge. I'm always with you. I'm the one that fights for you. I'm the one that holds you up. I'm the one that's strong when you're weak. I'm the one that's going to be there for you. You just be still and know that I am God. And if you do, then I will get you through. So the question comes, do you know that today? Do you know that? And I don't mean do you know with your head. Listen, even the devil believes in God. I don't mean do you know with your head that he is God. We, they're, you know, you're smart people. You can know that he is God without knowing God. Do you know today that he is God? Do you know that? Do you know God today? Do you know him in the sense that he has become part of you? Do you know him in the sense that no matter what goes on, you know you can trust him? Do you have that relationship with God today? Do you have it? Because listen, I want you to understand this very clearly. If you don't, 
then he is not your strength and your refuge and your hope because you don't know him. Do you know him? Can you trust him? Yes, if you know him. Well, how do I get to know him? Well, I just told you a few moments ago. God loved you so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. He said, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's how you can know him. That's how you can have that relationship with him. That's how you become one with God. That's how it can be done. Now, the thing that always scares me in every situation, in every church across the world are people who are in church. They're involved. They're doing all of those things, but there's never been a point in time in their life where they gave their life to God. And they believe with all their heart that all of the hard work they've done in Sunday school and church and all the times they've attended and they've sang the songs and they've listened to the sermons and all of the things that they've done, that that has saved them. There's not one single reference in Scripture that a church member is salvation. Perhaps there are those, even in our congregation today, that have never given their life to Christ, but they've been involved as a church member for a long time. And the devil is standing there on their shoulder with fear, saying, if you get up and go tell anybody, they're not going to accept you any longer because you've just been a fraud. I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. And that fear you don't have to hold on to because God overcomes all. And that if that's you and you're here today and you get up and come to the front when we open the invitation in just a moment and you pray to receive Jesus Christ, the only thing that will happen is a celebration. Maybe you're here today and you say, you know, I don't, I don't really know. I just came just because I'm not sure. I thought maybe it'd just make me feel better. God is a God of comfort, but he's also a God of conviction. The conviction comes if you don't know him. The conviction is you're a sinner. The comfort comes when you give your life to him. And that weakness that you have becomes his strength. And he overcomes it and he forgives you. Today, I just want every one of us to stop, be still, and listen to the Holy Spirit as he moves across the congregation during this time. And whatever he may place on your heart, I'm asking you, react to it. Don't wait. Now is the time. Let's pray. Father, as we do come to you today, we never know whether we'll have another day, another hour, or even another minute. God, we don't have any idea when the end of time will come. We don't know when the end of our individual lives will come. And so, God, I pray that you would just touch hearts today, that you would send the Holy Spirit across this congregation, you would tear down the walls of fear, and instead, Father, you would open the hearts and help them to know that they need you. If there are any here, Father, that, that are in that shape, that, God, you would just impress upon them their need for you in this moment. Perhaps, God, there are just people here that have been struggling because of all the heartache and the hardness and the trials and tribulations and everything else that's been in their, in their life and they have trusted everything but you. They may know you, but they still haven't trusted. God, I pray that you would tear down those barriers. You would help us be still and know, meaning have a relationship with you, that you are God. Help us to walk that walk every day, to lay down our heartaches, lay down all of those things, Father, 
and take up your strength. God, we just give it to you this morning. And we praise you for whatever it is that you're about to do. Father, we ask it all in the precious name of our Savior Jesus. Amen.